Okay, welcome once again to Produce Spotlight today, where we are going to be jumping right into our recipe that involves butternut squash. As you can see back here, we're going to be making a honey thyme roasted butternut squash, okay? So in my bowl here, I have two tablespoons of melted butter. It's great if you just do this in a microwave safe bowl and then we can add other ingredients to it, okay? So two tablespoons of butter in there. And then to that, I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of honey. Um, I saw somebody just said that you like my nails. Thank you. I like my nails too. It's my little treat to myself, but I enjoy getting done every once in a while. Um, and they just make me happy. So I do it. Um, and right now I have my Halloween nails going on, spiderweb and pumpkin. Um, but yes, yeah, so to my two tablespoons of melted butter, we're adding a hint of sweetness with our two tablespoons of honey. All right, so that is going in. In order to fully get honey off of your measuring cups and spoons, you can spray them with cooking spray and it'll slide right off. I didn't do that today, but it's something you can do. And it gets all that goodness out of there a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my, my mixing tool in there. So, two tablespoons of melted... Um, <clears throat> Two tablespoons of melted butter, two tablespoons of honey, and um, I see some of you are mentioning points in there. Yes, we do ask that you allow for 14 business days. So by this Friday, if you haven't seen points for the beginning month of October, those should be coming, okay? If you guys do have questions about points, I will put in the email address to send an email to, okay? Um, here, uh, I see some of you are mentioning some points for September. Please reach out to that email address and they will get you, um, all squared away. Okay. Kylene will talk you through that and get that figured out. So two tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of melted butter. Next, we're going to do a tablespoon of fresh thyme. Okay. So I am just going to start to uh, pull this off here and it doesn't have to be perfect right i'm gonna just measure some out but oh it smells lovely but about a tablespoon you could add more or less these little vines here are nice and tender that it's going to be all right compared to these woody ones here where we would want to kind of scrape backwards to get them off Okay, um, this is fresh thyme right here that's going in, fresh thyme, that kind of an iconic fall seasoning when you guys are starting to think about turkey time soon. Um, we have our poultry blend of herbs and seasonings that you can use too. So now I'm going to get in there, get the rest of that honey out. Okay, good. I might add a little bit more as we go along. And we'll go ahead and add this here too. Okay, let me rinse off my hand. Hold on. Okay, so we have that in there. And now just a couple of spices to add. We're going to be adding a teaspoon of garlic um powder here. I see somebody said parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Wonderful fall seasonings. I agree. Oh man, I didn't know this was, sorry. There we go. Um, so we're doing a teaspoon. I'm using my half a teaspoon because after this we're going to be doing a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm just going to be doing two of these to get us our full teaspoon. Okay. And now our half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So now we're bringing out that warmth component here in our spices. And then to just kind of take it from a notch of warmth to heat, 
we're going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of red pepper. If you'd rather not have a little bit of that heat, don't add it. Oh man, this is a new one too. Do you guys ever get spices and then fill your cabinet and not realize what you have and you don't have? That happens to me quite a bit. Rather than measuring out an eighth of a teaspoon, I'm just going to give it a generous little sprinkle here. A little more. I like spice. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to mix this together. Oh, it's looking nice. And that cinnamon's kind of turning it that dark caramel color, which is really pretty. Now, the recipe is going to say to then put your butternut squash on a baking dish and then brush it on. I'm going to just add my cubed butternut squash right to the dish so that way I can get things fully coated. We're gonna talk all about this cubed butternut squash here in a moment, um, but let's get this in here. Okay, the recipe calls for the whole container. So just a moment here, okay. This is a 20 ounce container of already pre-chopped, pre-ready to go squash, okay? Now we'll give this a mix and all of that goodness at the bottom. Like I said, you can do it either way. You can put it on your pan first and then brush this on or just add it all to the bowl, okay? I think we're looking good. Once I get it onto my pan, I might add just a little bit more time. Okay, let's move this over. And so I have my baking sheet here and we're just gonna spread this out a nice single layer. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Okay. I think we are about good here. Yes, so I have my oven set. <clears throat> for kicks, I'm just going to add a little bit more time. I have my oven set for 425, and we are going to put this in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, I'm gonna check it after 15 to see how we're doing here. There we go, get a little more on here. Just some presentation. You can add as much or as little if you like. Okay. Good deal. I see you guys are chatting in chat. I will look at what you're saying here in just a second. I'm gonna pop these in the oven. I will be right back. This is what we're looking at. It already smells good. Let's spread this one out here a little bit better. There we go, nice single layer. Oops, you get down there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now in we go. All right, guys, give me a second. Just gonna wash my hands and I'll come back. Okay. All right, let me get my video on here. Oops. Okay. And we will. Okay. Okay, so can you see me guys now? I see you're just, <laughs> somebody said you're just complaining about Eventbrite. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, those emails that come from Eventbrite are directly from Eventbrite. The reminders, everything like that, those are not something that we send or can tweak or can edit. They are something that are solely through Eventbrite. We are aware that the site is a little bit wonky. Um, they just recently changed their platform a little bit. So I think um, they're kind of working through those kinks. We do apologize for that inconvenience. Um, but uh, that's kind of what's going on with the with Eventbrite. Um, somebody just mentioned about the the recipe. The recipes are all on the Eventbrite site. So, for example, when you go to register 
um, for a class. The recipe link will be right under it um, on the main class page. So when you see like all of the produce classes, um, it'll tell you what day it is, what we're making and who um, is making it with you that day. And then we usually always send the remind, the, excuse me, the follow-up emails that do directly come for us um, that you get the recipe along with it. But I do apologize that there's the issues with the reminder emails. Um, hopefully Eventbrite can kind of get that settled soon. But okay, let's keep talking about butternut squash, right? We're, that's where we're here today. So I'm going to um, share my screen with you guys. And while we chat, um, our roasted butternut squash is going to be cooking away. I have the timer set for um, 15 minutes. So hold on. Where is my presentation here? Let me exit out of this one. Okay, just a minute, guys. It's always something, right? With computers, you guys feel the same way with them, right? Um, <clears throat> where is it at now? It's being silly. Hold on, guys. My presentation doesn't want to show. Here we go. There it is. All right. Just a short and sweet presentation anyway, but you should now be seeing my presentation for Produce Spotlight Butternut Squash here. Good. I got a thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. So, Butternut squash is going to be in that family of winter squash. And I just wanted to put that out there since last week we talked about the pumpkin, specifically the sugar pie pumpkin. And now we're talking about butternut squash, that both of them are in this family of winter squashes. Um, other ones that are in that family, um, these are just a few, but some of them that you'll see in our stores. So the Delcata squash is this one that is over here on the far, far, um, furthest to the right that is like the whitish color with the long green stripes. Um, that is a Delcata squash. And then behind that, you have your carnival squash right back here. And then the green one, you have um, your acorn squash, okay? And then this is a different variety of the carnival squash up front. Also one that is in this family, but I don't know that we usually think about it all the time this time of year, is your spaghetti squash. Um, so all of those are in that winter squash category. I just saw the question of how long do they, um, uh, how long do they keep? Um, and that is actually very dependent on the skin which comes to my question here of to peel or to not to peel. Can you eat the skin on squash? All of that good stuff. So let's let's work through that and then I'll get to that question about how long do they keep. So all winter squash, okay, the, all squash um, skins are actually edible. But just like a banana peel doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you, you want to eat it, right? So um, even though you can eat all of the skin on squashes, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the most palatable, all right? So the thicker skin on the squash, the less tasty it's going to be. The thinner that skin is, the more tasty it's going to be. So for example, that delicata squash that we talked about here on the right, oftentimes in recipes, you will see that that skin stays right on because it is much thinner, excuse me, much thinner. Um, and you can eat that, all right? Uh, and then it progresses up from there with your acorn squash. I saw somebody just mentioned in chat, you just made acorn squash and your husband actually loved it. So that's great. Um, and then after that, things like your butternut squash and your spaghetti squash, the skin is really thick. So it's not one of those skins that you would generally eat. That's not to say that you have to peel it off though, all right? Typically, in most of your squash recipes, the skin is gonna get super soft and then you're gonna scoop out the flesh and just eat the flesh inside without having to go through the trouble of actually peeling it. Now, the thickness of the skin is going to determine how long you can keep them good as well. So the thicker skin ones, like your butternut squash, your um, spaghetti squash and most of your acorn squashes too, 
they're going to keep longer, you know, usually for a month in a nice, cool, dark spot. But your delicata squashes, ones with that thinner skin, they're going to go bad more quickly. So I would say to use those within at least a week or two. All right. So that's where that comes in to play. Now, <clears throat> the nutrition highlights. Why do we want to um, eat these things? It's going to be the exact same that I presented um, last week during the pumpkin class. And that is that they are going to have a lot of vitamin A because of their nice orange or yellow hues to them, some vitamin C, potassium, and then the big one there too is fiber. So something that's going to really help to fill us up. Okay. So I see in chat, some of you mentioned that you love spaghetti squash. Um, or you've had all of them except the delicata. That's great. I love to see that everybody's getting in a variety and trying all the different ones that you are seeing in the stores. Some tips and tricks uh, in terms of how to pick a good squash. If you knock on it and you hear a hollow sound, it's going to most likely be a better pick. Um, now, because they are really hardy items and they some a lot of them do have that thick skin, they can be very, very hard to cut through, okay? So the tip is prick the skin with a fork and then microwave it for at least two to three minutes or soften it up that you can cut it, all right? And then don't, you know, don't throw out those seeds. You can roast those seeds in all of these squashes. Those seeds are going to give you a lot of protein, a lot of iron, unsaturated fat, which is the good heart healthy fat, as well as vitamin E, which is great for skin and nails. Okay. So all parts of the squash are good. Some you want to eat, some you don't want to. And then here are some tips how to make it easier to eat them. Okay. Especially that tip of microwaving it before you try to cut it. Before I knew that tip back in the day when I uh, first started working with squashes, um, I just remember struggling and struggling um, to, to cut through it, not even thinking to, to try to microwave it to soften it up a bit. So definitely give that a try. Now, if you are someone who's like, I don't have time to mess around with cutting it, chopping it, all of that good stuff, we have lots of great products in our stores, like the one that I used today that was pre-chopped that can help you out with that. So let's take a look at um, those here in a moment. Um, I, just a second, let me see in chat, do all squash have seeds? I'm going to say most likely yes, because from a science standpoint, squash are actually fruits. So they should all have seeds. Um, how long do you microwave them? At least two to three minutes. Spaghetti squash, I've done even longer, like four to five. And you can always, you know, heat it again. Um, in terms of the, the cooking the seeds, I can look into some more recipes for you guys to give you some ideas about how long to cook them and, you know, adding some seasonings to them. I can include that in our follow-up email today. I will say that I can already sell, smell the squash that's in the oven right now. It has five minutes left. Um, so excited to pull that out here soon. Let me reshare my screen with, uh, where is it at here? <laughs> Just having problems with my screen. Oh, here we go. Let's go here. Okay, switch over to this. So right now you should see the giant website, yeah? Is that up on your screen? Yes, thumbs up. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so I typed in butternut squash there at the top. And if you scroll down, you see all of the different goodies that you can get in our store. So from the actual, uh, <clears throat> I see somebody said in chat, you want a delicata squash recipe as well. We can do that. Um, let's actually take a gander together and see if we have any on the Savory website. But first, just to finish this out, you can buy the whole squash. Or this is what we used here today. Um, we have just our brand as well as Nature's Promise, which is our organic brand of pre-cut and cubed butternut squash that's ready to go for you. All right. So this is going to be in the fresh cut produce section near like the salad wall, same type of area. 
Um, I see questions in chat of how would you prepare spaghetti squash in a recipe? So typically you're going to roast the squash and then you, so you cut it in half, you put the halves down and roast it and then you open it up and you can scrape the insides to look like spaghetti. Um, I recently did one class here a couple of weeks ago, a spaghetti squash bolognese recipe that I can include in our follow-up email. And then I want to say that it's next Monday, maybe, that I'm making like a buffalo chicken spaghetti squash. Is that what's coming up? I'll look here in a minute. Um, but yeah, I could tune in for that class too. All right. So other butternut squash items here, we also have it frozen. So if you're huge into butternut squash, want it out of season, we have it frozen for you. Um, and then these are two fun ones that we have going on here um, where we have a cinnamon spiced already um, butternut squash and then a maple bourbon one. And I actually grabbed the maple bourbon one after I'm done sharing my screen. I'll show you guys just so you know a little bit more about what this looks like. Um, can you roast the frozen nut, butternut squash? Absolutely. You can roast any frozen vegetable. Uh, okay. Somebody told me, good, that I'm doing a spicy chicken stuffed spaghetti squash on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. I thought that was coming up soon. Um, if you are into butternut squash soup but don't want to make it on your own, I have tried this before. I really like it. It is light in sodium, so that is a good one there. I have never seen this. This was not out when my daughter was little, but this is an interesting little squeeze bottle here. Um, okay, moving down, butternut squash ravioli. And then I think there was one further I wanted to show you. Oh, those butternut squash crackers I thought was cool. Um, and then further down, just from typing in butternut squash, also these butternut squash recipes came up that you can then just click right from our giant site and we'll take you to the recipe on savory. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on this one. Um, that then it had, oh, what happened? Hold on. My computer's thinking. What did I hit? Oh, here we go. So there, it's going to come up. Can you guys still see this? That it's coming up with this recipe here, and then the, you can shop the ingredients. Let me see how I can get out of that. Um, you can see that. Okay, perfect. Hold on. Move that. Okay. So yeah, so now you have the recipe, and um, then you can shop the recipe too. Okay. So. That's cool there. Let's, we have a couple minutes. Oh, we have 27 seconds until my squash is, is ready. So let's go to recipes, okay? And this takes you right to the savory site. And let's type in the delicata squash and see if we have any recipes on savory. We do. Um, well, we do in the sense that we have one. We have a delicata squash soup. Um, with pepitas, which is roasted pumpkin seeds on there. It looks very nice. Okay. Um, I need to pull this out of the oven, but I see somebody gave some tips about um, doing spaghetti squash in water in a bowl and doing it that way. That's a great tip. When I did it for class the other week, I uh, did it in a slow cooker. So that was fun. And once again, I will share that recipe. Let me grab this out of the... Um, the oven for you guys. Okay, I'm gonna stop this video. We'll put this video back and I'll put it here. Just a minute. All right, guys, it is looking good. Yum. So as it was baking, I, um, first, as it was baking, I got that smell of the honey. It was like a sweetness to it. You can almost smell it from here. Yeah. It was like this sweetness as it was baking. Um, and then when I pulled it out of the oven, that's what kind of 
hit me first again, but then I smelled the spice. Like I smelled that cayenne a little bit and then it like settled in with the time. I kind of got all of it. It is a quick bake, especially for a roasted vegetable. Um, while I will try it for you guys, but let it cool just a second and then I will go grab a fork. But this is what I was, oh, it's a little blurry. But this is what I was talking about when I was showing you the site, okay? This is our maple bourbon butternut squash. So it comes with a seasoning packet right here. And then there are directions on the back as to how to make it. So it's pretty similar to what we did here. Um, it's preheat your oven to 400. Today we did 425. But this is 400. And then in a mixing bowl, combine three tablespoons of olive oil with this spice packet. Um, mix in the butternut squash. So this whole packet of butternut squash. And then put it on your pan and bake it for 30 minutes. And that's it. I think it sounds really yummy. I was intrigued by that. I do agree. Somebody said line your pan with aluminum foil or parchment paper is one that I usually like to use. And I am out of parchment paper right now. So I do have a little bit of a messy pan going on here, but such is life, right? That's okay. So shall we try it? Let me go get a fork. Hold on. Okay. Let's give it a go. I'm going to take this piece here that has the uh, the time on it. I have a feeling this is going to be really hot, like hot in terms of uh, temperature. Maybe I should pull a smaller one. Let's take this guy here. All right. Still think it's going to be hot. It smells so good, though. Hot. Mmm. Mmm. That's glum. That's really glum. You get all of those flavors. You get the honey. You get the thyme. And now I'm getting the cayenne, but it's not overpowering. Um, it's really good. I really like it. I think this would be really great with um, for like a sheet pan dinner. If you did some chicken sausage on this plate with it. Mm, really good. And then maybe some broccoli. I know. I'm trying not to. Um, so yeah, I think this would be really good next to some chicken sausage for sure. Give this a go. Let me know what you think. I'll be sending the recipe and whatnot out later. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. I'm trying to think. Think I'm no more classes the rest of the week for me. I will be in Altoona tomorrow um, doing a media segment for um, that area on Halloween. So if anybody is interested in watching that, I can send out the link later if you're looking for some Halloween ideas um, for Halloween parties or anything like that. Let me know. I'll send that out. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Good to be with you guys. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. All right. Oh, I got to stop the recording, huh? Okay.